How you doing? Good. I've got no drug paraphernalia or anything. I need to be concerned about weapon wise here, do we? No, no, we're just hanging out. No, just hang out in the shade. It's like a nice it's a nice day out. You should be in the sun instead of the shade. What's in your pocket there, Derek? Just see uh, some umbrella pad or something there? Yes. You got no crack though, right? No. We're focusing on areas, alleys, alcoves, anywhere where people um, tend to congregate because they don't want to be seen and it's uh, oftentimes when people are trying to hide away from us, it's an indication they might be doing something that is illegal. Um, in this instance, we didn't find any of the drugs, um, but we did find some crack paraphernalia in the case of a, a little brass elbow, which oftentimes they use. They'll pack Brillo into and use that uh, as a pipe. And, um, and some medication here. I'm not 100% sure what this medication is. And prescription drug abuse is just as prevalent as non-prescription and illegal drug abuse. Hi, Selena. Um, I found this on somebody, and I don't know who it belongs to. Jennifer, I can't make out the last name. They're a great bunch of guys. They've made a, an extra effort to actually come down, introduce themselves, get to know the population down here. Uh, you know, they're not coming down with any anything negative in mind. They're just coming down to find out what's going on and to make sure everything's going smoothly and that everybody's taken care of. Let's talk about how things have changed over those nine years. Huge changes, of course, with the influx of you know things like crystal meth and uh, crack cocaine and all of those kind of things. Um, when I first started here, the most significant issue may have been alcohol or pot and the change has been huge over the years you know you're dealing with people with multiple issues it used to be very easy to diagnose mental health versus addiction now you don't know anymore which one is actually the predominant issue but it's not it's certainly not a free-for-all like it used to be years ago no no i mean there's days that are good and days that are bad and that's normal in this environment you can't expect everything to run smoothly but you know it's uh, a community effort and we've got uh, far more far more community partnership now than we ever had Go ahead. so these blue plastic pieces these are oftentimes filled with sterile water and that's what's used um for injections so essentially they'll load the needle with a, a clean soluble solution first so any of these things that are found on the ground um, are you oftentimes handed out for people to safely use needles so that they don't get contaminated with any of the infectious diseases that are oftentimes associated to needle use but any of these laying around are oftentimes really closely found by needles and stuff like that so just uh it's a good thing to know what these are because these do get seen everywhere that uh, this is directly usually directly involved with needle usage as well so anything like this i find i'm just kind of wary that there might be needles in the area as well and again we're getting up to a very famous corner in the sense that uh, high drug trafficking and high drug use area so let's keep our eyes out here and make sure that there's no exposed needles on the ground but we actually uh, do have a lot of agencies that help us come around and make sure of that and pick stuff up when they see it especially on the main streets Let's talk about needles for a bit here. Uh, the uh, discovery of needles, uh, quite common? Or? Um, actually, believe it or not, it is. And needles are very associ very closely associated with heroin use and stuff like that. So you'll even see in places like this. This is off. This has been cleaned up a lot by the business that's here. Um, used to be just riddled with everything from crack pipes to needles to stolen property. Like I said, I guess the business that... Uh, that is now taking this place over and starting to clean this area up. But I mean, given the size of that crack, I personally couldn't fit in there. If I had to go in there to apprehend somebody, it would, uh, it would be very challenging for me. So, like I said, that's just a classic example of anywhere. Like, it's just, it's no bigger than the size of a flashlight. It's maybe 8 to 9 inches, maybe 10 inches maximum in length. And that's just an indication, an example of the areas that they try and go um, just to get out of the sight of the public trying to stop drug use and behind these things and stuff like that. Now this essentially at one point was one, but as you see, for whatever reason they have broken it open. So I'm gonna get my partner to go in there as his stature more fits the location. Well, we always check in behind it. You never know, I mean, if break and enters occur all the time and we're able to get stolen property back. Here you see a used rig up there and a spoon. If someone does have an infectious disease, whether it be hepatitis C or AIDS or any of those, you know, those infectious diseases, um, hepatitis C can live a very long time, um, even on a needle like that. If that was contaminated with blood or if that was stuck into someone's vein that did have an infectious disease, that could still do a lot of damage to somebody even if they step on it. Um, and it was broken off of this, this needle there. And then that cap would be used to secure it right there. Now we talked about... Um, needles and their usage and their prevalence. Uh, this spoon, any of that brief residue on there, some of it's going to be dirt and stuff from sitting, 
Um, some of it's going to be heroin as well. They'll use this to heat this up into the form of a liquid. And then they'll take the liquid off of here, bring it into the needle, pull the syringe back, and then they'll uh, shoot it into one of their veins. So Mill Creek Park, which was closed by the city because of active dealing and stuff, it takes you along the same, I think it's called the same Sun Budget Motel, the Max Convenience Store. There used to be a Tim Hortons, used to be a McDonald's, and the Nassau apartment buildings are just at the end. All of those, with the exception of the Max, almost everything out there has, uh, has recently, um, has, they've taken their businesses elsewhere because of active drug dealing, because of use and stuff. McDonald's was, a, a, for the longest time, even recently, um, you know, a year ago, they would congregate there in mass amounts and sleep around the corners and and uh, and stuff like that. But you know, through a, through active patrolling and enhanced uh, enforcement in that area, it's really it's really helped to clean that up. And we haven't noticed a whole lot. Um, we we still get information that people come through and they'll do a quick deal or they'll do a hand to hand exchange and then they'll leave. But we're uh, really lucky in having the congregations of mass amounts of people in there stop now. Like I said, these are the. The transient camps, they call them, they set up oftentimes underneath bridges and, um, and in conspicuous places. Driving by in any of the roads, Richter Street, Sunset Drive, you'd never notice this, especially given the, the mounds of dirt. So hiding within the mounds of dirt, um, it's, it's been a very, uh, very big uh, draw up here for that reason. And we've just found a lot of the people that we tend to look for um, hide up here. Uh, they camp up here, they live up here. And a lot of property that's uh, no, that's stuff from that girl. A lot of stolen property has been recovered out of here. A lot of drug paraphernalia has been found up here. A lot of drug use up here as well. We oftentimes just check it just to, for presence and for enforcement aspect of it, so that they know that we know where they are. Again, there's there's no no reasoning as to some of the stuff that does get found up here, um, and it can be anything from kids' toys to clothing and anything and whether it's stolen from luggage or whether it's it's uh, found in cars or on the side of the street and the onus is on the landowner to clean it up or I believe that is the way that it's uh, that it is done here it's it becomes a, an unsafe premise and if it becomes a haven for criminal activity then there's definitely uh, an onus to try and get stuff gone for the most part, there's no uh, no easier or cleaner way to put it. It is uh, definitely down and dirty. And if you look at our uniform, we oftentimes get uh, dirt all over our clothes doing this. But said if we're able to recover stuff from breaking enters, or if we're able to try and crack down on any of the problems, then um, we believe we're going the right direction. And uh, like I said, it, it doesn't matter that they're necessarily out of the way. But uh, if we are looking for somebody, it is nice to know where they are.